Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Now, if you're able and comfortable, please rise for the call to worship. O oh God, light of the hearts that know you, light of the souls that love you, strength of the thoughts that seek you, to turn from you is to fall, to turn to you is to rise, and to abide in you is to stand fast forever. Although we are unworthy to approach you or to ask anything of you, grant us your grace and blessing for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Our hymn is number 286, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Scripture tells us that if we say we are without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But Scripture also tells us that God is merciful and just and eager to forgive us if we will confess. Trusting in God's mercy, let us join in the prayer of confession. Eternal God, our Judge and Redeemer, we confess that we have tried to hide from you, for we have done wrong. We have lived for ourselves and apart from you. We have turned from our neighbors and refused to bear the burdens of others. We have ignored the pain of the world and passed by the hungry, the poor, and the oppressed. In your great mercy, forgive our sins and free us from selfishness, that we may choose your will and obey your commandments through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Beloved, hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Indeed, Christ prays for us. Whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone and the new life has begun. Be at peace 
and know that through Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Please turn and pass the peace of Christ to those around you. Peace be with you. Good to see you. Peace of Christ be with you. Now, please join in the prayer of illumination. God of abundant life, your grace is our daily bread. Nourish us by your word and fill us with your spirit so that we may grow in faith and love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. This morning's Old Testament reading is from the book of Psalms chapter 121. The psalmist writes, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He, will keep, he keeps, will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Today's Gospel reading comes to us from the Gospel according to John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from, or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, 
how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Poor Nicodemus. He is confused about the term born again. Nicodemus is certainly not alone. Many people, myself included, have been confused by this term over the years. Hopefully, as we dive into today's gospel reading, the Holy Spirit will help bring a little clarity to all of us. Nicodemus is a Pharisee, one of the religious elite and a respected teacher in the community. He is curious about this young rabbi, Jesus, but he doesn't wish to be seen going to meet him, so he visits him at night. Nicodemus starts the conversation by acknowledging that Jesus must have been sent by God based on the miracles that he's been performing. And then the confusion begins. Jesus tells Nicodemus that no one can see the kingdom of God unless they have been born from above. The Greek word in the original can be translated as either born from above or born again. So it's something of a double entendre. Of course, Nicodemus takes Jesus literally, and this leads to his massive confusion. Jesus tries to clarify by telling Nicodemus that one must be born of water and spirit. We'll come back to this phrase a little later. And explains that what is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Nicodemus is still not getting it. And Jesus finally questions his ability as a teacher of Israel I will confess that this part always confused me, so I had to dig a little deeper. As a respected Pharisee, Nicodemus should be familiar with the law and the prophets, and that's what Jesus is getting at. Jesus would expect Nicodemus to know and understand a passage in Ezekiel. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. God promises to cleanse Israel's sins with water and then give them a new spirit in their hearts. Jesus continues to teach Nicodemus and then finally spells it all out in one of the most beloved verses in, in the Bible, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but may have eternal life. Scripture never really tells us whether Nicodemus left that meeting with a better understanding of who Jesus was, but judging by what happens later in John's Gospel, I think it's safe to assume that the seed has been planted. Now I'd like to go back to verse 5 for just a minute, where Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water 
and spirit. This particular verse, like many other individual verses, has been the subject of a practice known as cherry picking. Cherry picking is taking one particular verse of the Bible out of context to support your own view. Many people and some traditions hold that this verse means that baptism is mandatory for salvation. Prior to the Reformation, the church went so far as to authorize midwives to perform baptism if it looked as if an infant might die prior to a priest being able to be there to baptize the child. In the Reformed tradition, we do not believe that the act of baptism is required for salvation. Yes, we believe that it is very important as a sign and a seal of God claiming us as his own. But it is the belief in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior that saves us. This belief in Jesus is what washes away our sins and creates a new spirit within us. So if being born again is not necessarily tied to baptism, when does it happen? I believe that it happens with different for every individual and it goes according to God's desire. Perhaps for some, it is at the moment of baptism. And for others, it may be after baptism, perhaps while they're going through catechism. For some, it may be after many years of wandering aimlessly through life. And yes, I imagine it can even happen at one's deathbed. It truly depends on God's perfect timing and the new spirit that he places in our hearts. One of the most frequent concerns that I hear from people is that their children, usually adult children, have stopped attending church. For many years, I myself had wandered away from the church, and my attendance was sporadic at best. It was a great concern to my parents. Obviously, we would love to see everyone worshiping God in a church setting on a regular basis. But it's important to remember that the church does not save. Baptism does not save. Ministers do not save. Only our belief in Jesus Christ can save. So what should we do if we're worried about a family member or a loved one that seems not to have experienced a rebirth of faith? Should we just throw up our hands and say, well, it's up to God now? In a way, yes. It is indeed according to God's plan, and his plans are never thwarted. But what we can do is pray for our loved ones, patient and persistent prayers from our heart are indeed heard by God. The other thing for us to remember is that we are not in charge of who is saved. That is God's job alone. What we see of our family and friends is not necessarily what God sees. Have you been born again? Many of us would say without hesitation, yes. We may even point to a particular time or event when we believe it happened. Others may not be so sure, and that's okay. We all go through periods of doubt or questioning. As the father of a demon-possessed boy famously said to Jesus, I believe help my unbelief. Whether we are certain that we have been born again or whether we have doubts, we can cling to God's promise to wash away our sins and give us a new heart and spirit. We can believe and trust in Jesus' words, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son 
so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Let us pray. Loving God, through your Holy Spirit, you send us living water to refresh and renew us daily. We thank you for the new life that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that all those we know and love may come to know the peace and joy of the rebirth that you offer. We pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, let us affirm what we believe with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn, if you're able to stand, is hymn number 496, Bread of Heaven, On Thee We Feed. come to the Lord in prayer. God of the covenant, you call us to be fruitful servants within creation and to offer our lives as the foundation of your realm. We lay before you the desires of our heart that we may be transformed by their fulfillment. We praise you for the joy of spring approaching the renewal of your creation. We praise you for the restoration and healing that allows members like Peggy to return to our midst. We pray for your healing to be with Mike Pratt, Wanda Reynolds, Marty Lennox. May they be comforted by your presence as they continue with their struggles of health. We pray that your peace and justice would spread throughout our community and indeed throughout the world, bringing an end to violence. We ask these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
Blessed are those who th hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from the north and the south, from the east and the west, to sit at table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites all who trust in him to share in the feast that he has prepared. Let us pray the prayer of great thanksgiving to our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to you, O God, for all your works. You created the world and called it good, and made us in your image to live together in love. You made a covenant with us, and even when we turned from you, you remained ever faithful. Thank you, O God, for sending us your Son. He lived among us and told your story. He healed the sick and welcomed sinners. He shared our pain and died our death, then rose to new life that we might live and all creation be restored. Remembering your boundless love revealed to us in Jesus Christ, we break bread and share the cup, giving ourselves to you to live for him in joy and praise. Glorious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ and that we may be his body for the world. By your Spirit, unite us with Christ and one another until we feast with him, with all your saints, in your eternal realm of justice and peace. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, Jesus took the cup, saying, This is the cup, is the new covenant sealed with my blood shed for the forgiveness of sins when you drink of it do this in remembrance of me brothers and sisters every time we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim the saving grace of our Lord Jesus until he comes again in glory these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
beloved, the bread of life. the cup of salvation. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, as the ushers come forward, let us present our gifts of gratitude through our tithes and our offerings. Let us pray. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be our God forever. Amen. Our hymn is number 321. The church is one foundation.
And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you from this day forward. Amen. Thank you.